Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to tell you about my latest guitar, a Gibson ES330. Let's get into the video. So, why did I choose an ES330? Well, as many of you know, my first jazz guitar was a 1959 Gibson ES125, so I've always liked the sound of P90s. I've tried plenty of those guitars, and I have tried plenty of ES330s over the years, but for me, the ES330 has a bit more punch than an ES125. I like the sound of players like Terry Smith. I know the most famous jazz guitar player that uses an ES125 is Grant Green, but really his sound never changed when he played his D'Angelico, his Epiphone, or his Gibson L7. His sound was pretty much the same no matter what guitar he played. So, some of you might be wondering, how do you actually get into owning a vintage guitar? The prices are really high at the minute, so how might you go about getting one, if there's one that you like? Well, one option is basically to try and trade up what you have, or sell what you have. That's what I had to do to get this guitar. Obviously, I couldn't afford a guitar like this at full listing price, so I had to let go of some other guitars. And do I miss some of those other guitars? Yeah, sometimes, but equally, I do feel like I play and sound better on this than the guitars which I traded to get this guitar. At the time of this video, I've been playing guitar for 20 years, and during that time, as I'm sure many of you do, you pick up guitars for certain projects or for certain sounds and tones that you're craving at a given time, but you might outgrow some of them. So that's a good opportunity. If you see a guitar that you like, which has got a higher price tag, then you can always trade or sell the guitars that you might not play so much. That's pretty much my number one thing that I don't like is having guitars which just sit in cases that don't get played. Before purchasing this guitar, I was actually fortunate enough to try a few different ES330s and I found them to be quite inconsistent guitars in some ways, like any vintage guitar. Some of them were great, others not so good. So I was kind of initially quite sceptical about getting a 1967 because around 66, many of the ES30s went to the uh, long neck and some of them started to have really scrawny thin necks, but this guitar, actually has a really big comfortable neck and as you can see it's still a short neck free free -er. I have actually tried a few older guitars than this. The earliest one that I've tried is a 63 ES free free -er, and I did actually prefer the feel and sound of this 67. So as you can see on this one it's got all the original hardware, original tailpiece, original scratch plate, original pickups, electronics and even the original butter bean tuners which are yellowing quite nicely as is the binding on the guitar neck. So if you see some of the 330s these are things that are commonly changed on them which really doesn't seem to affect the value of these guitars. I see them all the time with replaced Grover tuners, I see them with replaced tailpieces, so sometimes the uh, scratch plate gasses, so you have to replace the scratch plate. It doesn't seem to affect the value like it, what it used to, so I would have no problem buying one of these if it's been beat up and it's got replaced parts. The most important thing you've got to look for when buying any vintage guitar, really, is replaced pickups or electronics. Once you start faffing with those, the guitar doesn't seem to sound the same and it affects the value tremendously. So if you are looking at an older Gibson or something like that, and you don't really know what you're looking for, make sure that you ask somebody that does. What features attracted me to an ES330? Firstly, the fact that the guitar is a thin line meant that it's very comfortable to play. It's not deep or anything like that, like an arch top, so it's um, much more comfortable than an arch top, really. The second is it's very, very light. These guitars are known for being light because they're completely hollow. So you can have them on your lap or have them with a strap on and they never get heavy or tiresome when standing up for a gig. Another thing that attracted me to es 330s is the sound. It's quite interesting really because if you compare an es 330 to something like a double pickup cutaway ES125, the sound is a heck of a lot different, more different than what I think I ever realized. 
The only way that I could really describe the sound of the uh, Free Free Air is buttery and punchy. An excellent record to check out is Fallout by Terry Smith. I think that really is the best recorded Free Free Air guitar tone in my opinion. I think he played either a 62 or a 63 block um, neck Free Free Air that looked exactly like this actually on the front of the album cover. Um, obviously the most famous player that used the Free Free Air is Grant Green, but for me, Grant's tone was always the same no matter what he played, so I don't think it's actually a good example of how a Free Free Air sounds. <laughs> In terms of colours, my favourite colours for a Free Free Air are the Sunburst model and the Cherry Red with the uh, black knobs as opposed to the gold knobs. I was actually all set on getting a Cherry Red Free Free Air, I've got too many Sunburst guitars, but when I compared this against a Cherry 66, I did prefer this Sunburst in terms of the sound and playability, so for me, sound and playability always comes over looks, but I do have the soft spot for the Cherry Red Free Free Airs as well. So that concludes this video on my 67 ES Free Free Air. What is your dream guitar? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.